Hey, it's Troy Erickson with copywriting.org. And today I want to talk about something that's actually really, really, really important. A lot of people will ask, what niche should I choose when I'm copywriting? And my guest today is a firm believer that you should choose something you enjoy, which is exactly what I think too. So we want to jam on it and hopefully inspire some people um, to actually write in a niche they enjoy. And I also want you to get to know my guest because he's pretty cool. So I would like to welcome Phil Valiant. Hi, how you doing, Troy? Good, yeah. So first of all, Phil, I'm excited to talk about having fun when writing copy. But first, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into copywriting? Yeah, um, I spent 15 years in the medical in the medical field working on equipment, um, anything from NIBP machines up to anesthesia machines. And... Uh, I was kind of getting burned out with that a little bit and I decided I was going to open up a pizzeria. So I start looking into that kind of, you know, all that stuff you need for that. And, um, part of that is marketing. And while my wife was on maternity leave, she came across copywriting and I had kind of been doing it on and off for 20 years, not knowing what it was called. Um, I'd help people out occasionally writing little things here and there for them never really considered it as a career before. Um, my wife stumbled across this and she's like, man, you, you really need to look into this. You'd be good at it. And I kind of put it off for a little bit. And um, finally, you know, she got persistent enough and I, I did look into it. And uh, on March 18th of 2022, I quit my job and I started doing this full time. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, I know one thing that you put down that you're really, really passionate about is real estate. So Mm -hmm. it's something you kind of stumbled into and obviously that's mainly what you're writing right now. And you have some cool wins that we'll share later within real estate, but how did you become a real estate copywriter? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I had a website um, I put together. Um, it was very mediocre. If I'm being honest, it was my first attempt at, at building my own site. And uh, I was lucky enough. Um, there was an agency up in Toronto that stumbled across it. And they asked me if I would be interested in, in helping them out with a small job. And I said, yes. And uh, they liked my work. Um, so they came back to me with more and they referred me to other people. And uh, it's just kind of gone on from there. Sweet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of the things that you mentioned as well um, is that you're working with one of the top real estate agents in all of Canada, right? So obviously, this is the client that you're talking about. They've probably been with you for a little while. Can you talk a little bit more about like what real estate copy exactly looks like? Because when I think of real estate, and it's something that I've gotten into as well, I just think of Zillow and I think of, you know, brokers and people who are finding deals for each other and like getting my 8% return and all that. But how exactly do you think as a real estate copywriter and what exactly are you writing every single day or every single week? So I'm I'm really trying to get their personality out there. Um, you, you know, it's, it's more than just deals. It, it's about the individual behind those deals. Um, people connect with people for different reasons. So I'm a big fan of getting their personality out there. Uh, what, one of the things I really encourage, I, I, I even try to talk to realtors about picking a niche. Um, I currently work with luxury realtors and, you know, they're focused on a target market and it really helps them dial in who they're trying to talk to. And one of the things that I, I really stress is everybody has their, their target audience and their avatars and stuff. And I like to take it a step further and look at who's your target audience. What's your target audience avatar? What's their avatar, right? So, so what, what, what do they look at as their idealized version of themselves? And that's who I try to target with my copy. Because nowadays you see ads everywhere. You go on Facebook, they're all over the place. You turn on the TV, anything, websites are just, and, and people are numb to it. So people don't want to be advertised to. They want to kind of stumble across your product and feel like, like they discovered you. So that's kind of the way I try to navigate that. And I, I try to help realtors come across in, in that conversational tone as opposed to hey i sell houses because we all know you sell houses but why should we go with you yeah that's a good point because you're right there's uh, you know most people are out there trying to like tell people like hey 
these are your problems. This is where you're at right now. And here's why we're important. But one thing that happens, especially as you scale up in business, so something that I've experienced, as well as some interesting niches like real estate, is people, they, they feel smart when they find you. And organic reach is always going to be the best. And obviously, there's other elements of that, like SEO and copy and all that. But making somebody feel smart for choosing you and painting the picture of what their life will be like, as opposed to maybe where they're at right now, because... With real estate, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it's much more important to show them where their life could be and what their, like you said, their ideal life, as opposed to like, oh, hey, right now you're struggling, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <But what's, laughs> what are maybe a couple, um, a couple pointers you have for anybody who maybe runs their own real estate business um, or maybe any potential future clients? Well, it's it's interesting. I, I saw an interview probably five or six years ago with an actor, uh, David Hyde Pierce. He played, for those that don't know, he played Niles in the uh, hit TV show, Frasier. And he talked about the reason that show worked was because they gave their audience credit. They didn't dumb the jokes down or anything like that. They just assumed that you were going to get it. And it they won all kinds of awards over 11 years and stuff like that. And for whatever reason, when I start working in real estate, I, I, I kind of thought about that. And as you're, you're aware, you know, with copy, a general rule of thumb is keep it around a fifth to seventh grade reading level. But I found, and I've had really good results with this, I bring my copy up to a ninth grade level. It, it's enough that you can skim over it. And you can, you can, you don't have to really take your time and digest it because it's still simple enough that you can get the gist of it from skimming, but it does kind of elevate it a little bit and it, and it gives the audience credit. Like you said, it helps them feel smart in a way because it, it stands out. It, it's still, it's the same message that other people are saying, but it's, it's presented in a way that's just unique enough that they feel like they discovered it. Yeah, that's cool because it's, <laughs> I never thought about it that way, but it, that does remind me sometimes when I was a kid, um, you know, everybody told you when you were a kid that it was good to read. So I would like read something and I would see a word that I didn't really know what it meant. And I felt smart that I was reading a book with words that I didn't know because I was like, oh, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And then yeah. I would look up those words and feel even smarter. So yeah, it's like if you're pushing something that's luxury, it's just a little bit different conversation. And, you know, most people who mm -hmm. actually have the money to purchase, you know, a million dollar or more home, like they're probably a little bit more intellectual when it comes to, to reading too. So that's really cool. Um, now you mentioned that, you know, your client can is one of the top real estate agents, Shea sells boutique. It sounds very luxurious mm -hmm. to me. Um, do you know, because like a lot of copywriters are like, oh, I've sold like this many dollars with my writing, which is a great metric, of course. Do you know exactly how many homes you've helped sell or um, any other metrics like that? I, I don't know. I, I haven't asked that. Um, you know, I provide the copy for them. Uh, they get back to me telling me that they like it. And, you know, we move on and, and they get back to me with a, you know, another request. And uh, we just keep rolling that way. I, I've never really Look, you know, I, I do this because I love it. You know, the money will come. Um, and uh, I just, I really enjoy it. So that's really all I'm concerned about. They're happy. I'm happy. Do you know the uh, the price tag? Like, what exactly is a luxurious home considered? Like, is it a million dollars plus or? I think it depends on the area. I mean, you know, if you look at California, there are certain places uh, in New York City, you know, a million dollars will probably get you a 1,200 square foot home you know, uh, with, with not a whole lot of bells and whistles. Um, so I, I don't know the exact metric on that. Uh, I tend to, uh, when I make my mailing lists and stuff like that to go out, I, I try to look for real estate agents that specialize in, in luxury real, real estate because they already have that niche narrowed down, not necessarily now, the location. Yeah. Now when it comes to like, the other, like I always tell people that to be a good copywriter, you have to not just understand copy, but you have to understand all the things going around the copy, right? Because it's like, if you have tunnel vision, and you just write the copy, like, sure, it might be okay, but really understanding 
the rest of the environment, like the rest of what the business is trying to accomplish, the rest of what that business's client is trying to accomplish. So do you touch on anything outside of the copy? Like maybe do you advise on like where pictures should be on the site or do you ever talk to the client and kind of like point out some other things that are going on around the copy that they can fix? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I really don't consider myself a copywriter per se. I like to think of myself as more of a freelance marketing director. Um, because you have to wear several hats if you want to bring value to what you're doing. I mean, it, it's it's good for the client, it's good for you, and it, it's a lot of fun. So, but I, I do, I, I touch on all of that. I'll give them ideas on uh, different types of things they can run, uh, different promotions and things like that. Whether they use it or not, I don't know. Um, but it, it's something that I, I do bring up. Cool. So. Uh, last question here before I before I ask how people can contact you. Um, what is and I'll put you on the spot on this one. Hmm. What um, what's like the most unique or like creative thing that you've done or that you've seen somebody else do within real estate when it comes to just like you know copywriting or something just just like really different. Um. I'd have to I'd have to go back to uh, Shea Sells Boutique up in Toronto. Uh, when they do open houses, it, it's not just an open house. They'll have like live music events and stuff like that. Um, it's a great way to draw people in. You know, um, I thought that was really creative. Yeah, that's really unique. Um, it's kind of like you talked about painting the picture and like uh, showing them their ideal life before it even happens, because if they can envision this amazing, luxurious party in their backyard, I mean, hey, I'm probably more likely to do it if I'm that kind of person. Um, for me personally, I don't know. I just like walking into a house and it's big and there's lots of open space and I can like envision things. But having having the party there, whether it's just like close family and friends or if you're one of those people who likes to go crazy, that's pretty cool. So. Yeah. Um, Phil, tell, tell people how they can contact you, whether, you know, maybe they need help writing real estate copy, or maybe they just have like questions in general, um, with your experience or about real estate. How, how should people contact you? I, I have a website. It's right copy, W R I T E C O P Y dot net. And, uh, you can reach out to me there. Uh, I am on Facebook, uh, Philip Balliot, and, um, I have a business line, 850 seven three six six zero one two you got it all man there we go we'll put it in the description as well but yeah um like i said i really liked your copywriting.org interview and we came here and did a video i think if i'm not mistaken at least so far you're the only person that's specializing in real estate so that's pretty cool i've never made a video about it before so i was pumped about that so thank you for coming on here and um if you need help with real estate talk to Phil. So again, I'm Troy from copywriting.org and this is Phil Balliot and we will see you next time. Thank you, Troy.